the same, and uh, I've asked this tell the same support for my current resolution uh, and letter signed. And, uh, so you pray for it. That's just all right. <laughs>
came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? That sounds just like it, just like us, don't it? Yeah. The Lord shows up and said, I am your reward. Right. He's not the blessing giver. He's the blessing. Right. He, he is what right. Lord. Yeah. He said, I am your reward. You know what Abraham turns around and says? What are we going to give him? Yeah. Right. Right. Sounds, like, sounds like us. Yeah. And uh, the Lord said, hey, you got we, I'll give you everything in myself. I am right. the reward. Oh, Abraham said, hey, Lord, are we going to give him? Yeah. Let's look on. Look at verse number two. And Abraham said, Lord God, what will thou give me? Seeing I go childless, and the steward of my house is this Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, Behold, to me thou hast given no seed. And, lo, one born in my house is mine heir. And, behold, 
the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. Verse 6, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. Amen. And he said unto him, I am the Lord that brought thee out of Ur of the Chaldees to give thee this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, whereby shall I know that I shall inherit it? And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another, but the birds he but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful and thankful uh, for another <coughs> opportunity to stand here. Thanks for another opportunity to preach the precious word of God. Lord, thank you for your dear people. Father, we know what we are. We're insufficient of ourselves. Lord, we don't have the ability. We don't have the wherewithal. We don't have the power to do anything. Lord, if anything gets done, the Holy Ghost is going to have to do it. And so, Father, I'm begging you uh, that you'd come and speak unto the hearts of your people. And do a work of grace in each and every life. May you feed our souls tonight. May the Holy Ghost make it so. We'll thank you and we'll praise you. Whatever you do in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Yeah. Here in the book of Genesis, we find God is dealing with Abraham. Now, Abraham and God are having a conversation. And you'll find when you study this passage how Abraham received righteousness. Notice verse number 6. He said this, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. We find that Abraham was made righteous by faith. Right. He simply believed what God told him and he accepted it as fact. I mean, brother, can you imagine? God comes to you and says, Abraham, I am the exceeding great reward. Right. Abraham says, Lord, what are you going to give me? You know I don't have any children and this servant of mine, he's heir that all that I have. And God said, that ain't going to be the case. Don't worry about it. He said, he won't be your heir, but that that comes forth of thine own bowels, he will be your heir. He said, he said Abraham, I will give you some children. Yeah. And he, he, furthermore, he takes Abraham out and he says, Abe, see all them stars up there. Abraham said, yes, sir, I see them all. He said, uh, do you see all them stars? He said, I do. He said, well, uh, that's how many youngins I'm going to give you. He said, your seed's going to come out. When it's all said and done, they're going to be more than the stars of heaven. He said, Abe, do you believe that? Abraham said, yes, sir, I believe that. God right. said, good, I'll count that for your righteousness. Yeah. And that's how Abraham got in. That's how Abraham was justified. Right. That is a picture of New Testament salvation. Yeah. You know how you and I got in? We just believe what God said. Right. When God said Jesus loved you, yeah. and Jesus died for you, right. and Jesus gave his life for you, and no. Jesus was born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, died on the cross, and three days later he got up. Do you believe that? I said, yes, sir, yeah. I do. Right. God said, good. I'm going to count that for righteousness. Right. And so the Lord uh, made us righteous by faith, just like Abraham. Yeah. I mean, brother, Abraham believed God. And the Bible says it was counted to him for righteousness. Right. We, the same thing for me and you. We simply believed and received the righteousness right. of God. Abraham did not receive his righteousness by works, <laughs> but by faith. Yeah. And brother, uh, hear me, when a, when a sinner in the day and hour which you and I live will come to Jesus and believe what God said right. about themselves and what God said about his son, then and they'll put their faith, their hope, their confidence, and their trust in Jesus Christ, right. God will save them right. and give them the righteousness yeah. of God. Yeah. Yeah. So you see the picture that exists. Now, you will find in Romans chapter number 4, the apostle Paul deals with righteousness by faith and not of works. You will find in Romans 4, he references Abraham and his conversion. This is what Romans 4, 16, I ain't got time to go with the whole chapter, but here's what Romans 4, 16 says. Therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace. 
to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed. Not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, right. who is the father of us all. Amen. Do you realize in the New Testament it calls Abraham the father of faith? Yeah. You will find the Apostle Paul deals with this in Romans. He deals with it in Galatians. And he runs back and references what happened in Genesis chapter number 15 where Abraham simply believed God. Right. And I thought, man, uh, what a blessing. If we would just get back to believing God, right. there's no telling what we'd see the Lord do in our lives. Now, uh, so Abraham has a salvation experience in verse number 6. It is a type of New Testament salvation. And you will find all the way through uh, the New Testament, you'll find that uh, Paul and the other writers will point back toward Abraham. Uh, but that's not what I'm dealing with tonight. Uh, and as you continue to read this chapter, you'll find that God asked Abraham to make a, a sacrifice. Look at verse 9. And he said unto him, Take me a heifer of three years old, and a she-goat of three years old, and a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove and a young pigeon. And so you'll find where Abraham lays out the sacrifice and does what the Lord asked of him. You realize tonight after we're saved, the Lord deals with us about the things in our lives. Yeah. Right. There are things He asks us to give up and to stop doing. Yeah. And then there are things He asks us to start doing. Right. You'll notice that God asked Abraham to make this sacrifice immediately after his conversion. So it is with the New Testament believer. Immediately after our conversion, the Lord begins to ask us to make sacrifices for Him. Right. He tells us to start doing some things. Yeah. And He also tells us to forsake some things. Right. Yeah. Now, tonight we've been in revival. And the Lord has blessed and dealt with us. Yeah. And there's no doubt uh, God has spoken to our heart about some things in our life. Right. Yeah. He's dealt with us about beginning to do some things. And he's probably dealt with us about stopping some things. Right. Yeah. Amen. I want you to notice once he makes uh, this sacrifice. Look at verse 10. And he took unto him all these and divided them in the midst and laid each piece one against another. <coughs> but the birds divided he not. And when the fowls came down upon the carcasses, Abram drove them away. You will find that you see his salvation experience in verse 6. You will find in verse 9, God begins to deal with him about making some sacrifices. Right. And after you get saved, as we said a moment ago, God begins to deal with you about doing some things. Right. And about some things you need to stop doing. Right. Amen. And uh, that, that occurs immediately after salvation. But you'll find that Abraham, he deals with Abraham and tells him to make this sacrifice. And as Abraham's trying to make this sacrifice, these birds come down and begin to attack his sacrifice. I want you to notice what Abraham does. He spends his time running the birds off that are attacking his sacrifice. I can picture Abraham, the Lord has spoken to him, and the Lord has dealt with him. And he said, Abe, I want you to make a sacrifice. Abe said, all right, I'll do it. And so he takes the, those sacrifices and he cuts them in two. And he lays one piece over here and one piece over there. And you'll find he does that with all the sacrifice except for the birds. And you, if you run the reference to Leviticus, you'll find he just beheaded those birds, but he divided them not. Yeah. But all the other sacrifices he divided and put half on this side, half on that side. Right. And as Abraham is making this sacrifice, uh, the birds come down. And they're trying to devour his sacrifice. They're trying to... Uh, eat up his sacrifice. They're trying to, to uh, hinder his sacrifice. Right. Yeah. You'll find Abraham spends the remainder of the day chasing them birds off. Amen. I can picture him as he's standing there and he's, he's waiting on the Lord. He's already made the sacrifice. He's waiting on the Lord to honor it. <laughs> but while he's waiting on the Lord, these birds come down. Abraham says, shoot! Hey, get out of here! Right. He, spends, he spends the rest of the day running these birds away from his sacrifice. Right. Yeah. Now you realize tonight that birds in your Bible are a type of demons. Yep. Right. You realize that. When Jesus is telling the story about the man sowing seed in Luke chapter number 8, 
He said he sowed, he sowed seed and some fell on good ground and some fell on stony ground. And You know, he tells that story. I want to read the verses to you. In Luke chapter number 8, verse number 5, it says this, The sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. He goes on, his disciples asked him about this parable. What does it mean? He explains it in Luke 8, 12 and says this, Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and take away the word out of their hearts, right. yeah. lest they should believe and be saved. Now, I ain't got time to run all the references for demons being typified as birds throughout the Scripture, but I just gave you one. You'll find that birds are typified uh, as demons in the Scripture. Now, once you get this picture in your mind, Abraham is, has gotten gloriously uh, converted in verse number 6. Immediately, the Lord begins to demand sacrifice of him. Abraham begins to make those sacrifices. And when he started making those, act, those sacrifices, these birds came and tried to devour up right. the sacrifice. Yeah. Here's the picture I want you to get. The same is true for you and I. We get gloriously saved by the grace of God. Yep. God begins to deal with right. us about yep. making sacrifices, right. yeah. about giving some things up, right. about starting some things, some things that are a sacrifice in the flesh right. that we might be closer to Him. And when we begin to make those sacrifices, guess who's going to show up yep. and try to pick apart your sacrifice? Right. The devil. Right. Just as these birds showed up and tried to pick apart Abraham's sacrifice, there is no doubt in my mind tonight that the devil will show up and begin to try to pick apart right. your sacrifice. Yeah. Right. He'll try to get you to, to not make that sacrifice. He'll try to get you to back up on that sacrifice that you have promised the Lord. Yeah. Right. Now tonight, yeah. uh, during revival, there is no doubt the Lord dealt with hearts. There is no doubt the Lord maybe convicted us about something we shouldn't do or, or convicted us about beginning to do something that we ain't been doing. Yeah. And you know what we do? We make a commitment to the Lord. We say, Lord, I'll make my sacrifice. Lord, I'll begin to do what you tell me to do. Lord, I'll stop doing this thing and I'll start doing this thing. Right. And we make that sacrifice for the Lord. But you know what happens as soon as revival's over and just as soon as the evangelist goes home and the singers leave, then the devil shows up and begins to pick apart yeah, your right. sacrifice. Sure. And he'll begin to deal with you about your sacrifice. And he'll try to say, well, you didn't really have to do that. And you shouldn't have done that. He'll do everything that he can right. to try to stop you and get you to back up on those sacrifices you told the Lord you would make. Right. And so tonight, I want to preach on this thought briefly. Beating back the buzzards. Yeah. Beating back the buzzards. Amen. Abraham didn't have a problem making the sacrifice. Right. Abraham didn't have a problem giving to God. But you know what he had to do? He had to guard that sacrifice that he made. And because these birds kept coming. And they were trying to pick apart this sacrifice. And Abraham spends the rest of the day beating back the buzzards, running them off, right. keeping them off his sacrifice. Hear me tonight. You may have made some promises to the Lord since you've been saved. And the Lord's dealt with your heart about some things and told you you need to start doing this or stop doing that. Right. Uh, but you know what happens? The devil shows up and tries to pick apart your sacrifice and try to keep you from making that sacrifice. Right. And you know what you're going as you end up doing, you're going to have to spend the next several weeks, the next several months, the next several years beating back the buzzers right. and continue right. to make that sacrifice. Right. Maybe the Lord's dealt with you about being more faithful to church. And you say, Lord, uh, from now on, I, I'm going to be more faithful. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I ain't going to miss this, the service. When the doors are open, I'm going to be there. Right. You know who's going to show up right. on Wednesday night about 6 right. o'clock? The devil. And he's going to say, you're tired. You've worked all day. Right. And you didn't rest. And you know what that is? That's just one of them buzzards coming, yeah. trying to yeah. trying to pick apart your yeah. sacrifice. Yeah. You know what you want to do? You want to beat that buzzard back and say, no, no, no. I done talked to the Lord. Me and the Lord's already got right. it nailed down. We've already got it settled. And I am not going to let the devil allow me and my sacrifice. Right. I'm going to beat back the buzzard. Yeah. Right. Maybe he dealt with you about being a witness or handing out more tracts or being a, a better a, a, a witness for the Lord. And you say, Lord, I'm going to do it. Lord, I'm not going to let the devil rob me. I'm going to be a better witness. Amen. Then you walk through Walmart and you think, man, I need to honor the Lord and head out of track. And guess who will show up on your shoulder? Yeah. The devil will say, now, you don't have to go all crazy. Right. 
Yeah. And uh, what are them people going to say? You hand them a track of our tender church. Right. Right. You know what that is? It's just one of them old buzzards trying to bring right. rock right. with your side of right. I mean, brother, maybe it's about watching too much TV. Right. Maybe it's about what you watch on TV. Right. Yeah. The Lord dealt with your heart and you say, Lord, I'm going to make that sacrifice because I want more of you. And Lord, I know I shouldn't watch this or I know I wasted a lot of time watching that. And Lord, I, 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 I want to do better. And so you, you get an order and say, Lord, I'm going to do better. The buzzards are going to show up and try to pick apart your right. Right. Lord, You're going to spend the majority of your time beating back the buzzards. Yeah. And tonight, maybe the Lord dealt with you about reading your Bible more. Maybe the Lord dealt with you about your prayer life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but I know the Lord, there's no doubt in my mind, through five days of meeting, the Lord dealt with you about something. Sure. Yeah. Some kind of sacrifice. And you talked to the Lord and you said, Lord, I'm going to do it. Lord, I'm going to do better. I'm going to read my Bible more. Lord, I'm going to pray more. I'm going to be a better witness. Lord, I'm going to stop doing this. And I'm going to stop doing that. And you made all kinds of sacrifices. But now revival's over. Right. Guess who shows up trying to right. rob you of your sacrifice? Yeah. Sure. Amen. The devil. That's yeah. right. Just like he did. Not listen. The very first book of your Bible, God sets a standard and sets a principle in the Word of God. Yeah. Any time you start making sacrifices for the Lord, the buzzards are going to show up. Right. Right. So you know what you got to do. You got to beat back the buzzers. Right, right. You got to make sure. Listen, you ever made a commitment to the Lord? I mean, God got the blessing in the church or something. You went to an altar and you said, Lord, I'm going to do it. And not a week later, you quit doing it. Right. Yeah. Not three days later, the devil jumped on your shoulder and yeah. said, Now, you don't really need to do all that. You don't really need to do. You, you Listen, you was just in the moment and you just got excited and the Lord understands and you just gave up on that sacrifice that you made. Yeah. Right. You know who that was? That's the devil. Yeah. Right. That was a buzzard showed up Amen. trying to trying to devour your sacrifice. Yeah. So hear me. As a Christian, you've got to learn to beat back the buzzards yeah. because they are coming after your That's sacrifice. Right. Yeah. Maybe the Lord dealt with you about giving. You say, I'm going to give more than I ever give. I'm going to make that sacrifice. And then all of a sudden, the hot water heater goes out. Right. And you think, well, I was going to, I was going to make that sacrifice and and the, the devil will jump on your shoulder, that buzzer will show up and say, Now, you better stick that back in your pocket. God understands you've got to take care of yourself. Now, you, can I remind you that's a lie out of the pit of hell? God never right, told you to take care of yourself. Right, he right. told you to do right, and he'd take care that's of yourself. Right. 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 But then buzzards start showing up. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Then buzzards start circling around your sacrifice. And if you ain't careful, you allow them buzzards to devour. Yeah. 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 So, Tonight, we got to learn to beat back the buzzards. Amen. Listen, you made a sacrifice. Leave it with the Lord Amen. and honor it. Right. Do you know how the sacrifice would take place in the Old Testament? They would take that sacrifice and put it on an altar. Yeah. And you will find that the fire never did devour that sacrifice until they took their hands off of it. Yeah. Right. God would wait till they took their hands off that sacrifice before he ever accepted it. Amen. And tonight, if you've sacrificed it, if you've made some promises to the Lord during revival or any other time in your Christian life, it's time to beat back the buzzards Amen. and honor your sacrifice for the Lord. Amen. Hear me. A Christian life that bears no sacrifice is no Christian life at all. Amen. Amen. Right. And listen, we live in a generation that wants all that God has without any requirements on their part. Right. Can I be honest? Have you ever had this happen? You could be praying or something the Lord do with your heart about fasting. I know that's a dirty word in a lot of churches these days. Preach. But God would deal with you about fasting. He'd say, you need to fast. You know what you'd say? I'll do it, Lord. I'll do it. Tomorrow morning when I get up, I'm not going to eat a bite. I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray and I'm going to honor you, Lord. And by 1030 that morning, you are starved to death. Yes, you, to eat you know what that is? That's in buzzard yeah. circling your sacrifice. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Hear me, there's a real devil. Yeah. We live in a generation that wants Jesus and all of the blessings right. without any requirements right. or any right. sacrifice right. on our part. Yeah. 
Hear me, it does not work that way. Right. If you want God, there's sacrifices that must be made. Yeah. And when we start making those sacrifices, when God begins to deal with us about those sacrifices, one thing's for sure, them buzzards oh, yeah. don't start circling. Yeah. Yeah. And so tonight, we've got to learn to beat back the buzzards. You know what Abraham said? I'd rather have the Lord. I, I want the Lord. I don't, I listen, I, I, was it hard work beating back the buzzards? Absolutely. Right. And Tom Abraham sat down in his tent door. There come a buzzard. He'd get up and say, hey, get out of here. Right. He'd get that and run off. No, sir. Did he come over here and sit down again? Here come another. Run to Jesus. Get out of here. And he spent the day running those buzzards off. Right. Right. Hear me. It's hard enough to make sacrifice. Yeah. Right. But then you've got to protect that sacrifice. Because the devil's going to show up and he's going to tell you, ah, you don't have to make that sacrifice. Right. Right. You ever do this? You say, I'm going to get up early in the morning. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to get up early and I'm going to read my Bible before I do anything. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to set my alarm for 5.30. I'm going to get up and go read my Bible before I go to work. I'm going to honor the Lord. I'm going to get up early. You set your alarm at 5.30. That sucker goes off at 5.30. All of a sudden you think, mm, I don't know. It sure is early. You know what that is? That's in buzzers. Trying to pick apart and devour your sacrifice. Now hear me tonight. If you have talked to the Lord and you have made a, 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 you have made a sacrifice with the Lord, can I say this? He expects you to honor it. Yeah. 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 And listen, Abraham, God said, I want you to make a sacrifice. He said, I'll do it. And he does. Mm -hmm. Did he have to spend a considerable amount of effort beating back the buzzards? Well, sure he did. Yeah. Can I be honest? This flesh didn't get saved. That's right. It's still full of the devil. Right. It's yeah. still wicked. And if you give it you give it an inch, it'll take a mile. Yeah. And then you have the devil on top of it whispering in your ear. And guess what? If you ain't careful, you'll let them buzzards devour your right. sacrifice. Yeah. Tonight, we've got to beat back the buzzers. Yeah, amen. And honor those sacrifices. Hear me. God has been blessing our church. Amen. Consider. Yeah. Amen. We've seen several folks saved. We've seen the Lord bless. We had a home dinner of a revival meeting. Yeah. And God is beginning to really do something in our church. There ain't no yeah. doubt in my mind. Yeah. Amen. And uh, I see God blessing. I see God moving. I see God working. I see just little things that the Lord points out to me. And I see God really wanting to do something here. There's no doubt in my mind. I mean, just watching the Lord bless and watching the Lord move. And listen, it, he'd bless a little bit here, and then it'd be a little while, and the Lord bless again a little bit here, and then it'd be a while. But guess what happened? Those blessings, uh, that, that span between the blessings getting shorter and shorter and shorter. Right. And you know what God's doing? God wants to do something here. Hear me. If God is going to do anything here, it's going to require sacrifice yeah, on our part. Right. Yeah. We're not going to have the power of God, the presence of yeah. God, and the blessings of God, and watch sinners get saved, and watch saints get helped, watch homes get put back together. I mean, just watch God bless and move with you and I aren't willing to make the sacrifices right. that God yeah. requires. Right. Yeah. Right. Can I be honest? That young couple got in. She got saved on Sunday morning. We came back to church on Tuesday night that week because it's Thanksgiving. Her husband got an hour and stayed 25 minutes and got and, and the Lord did a work in his heart. Yeah. And just the other Sunday morning, the whole crowd was piled up here in all, all yeah. the youngins and mom and daddy. Listen, you know what that is? That's the Lord. Right. Yeah. So, now what he did for them, there's a thousand other families out there that yeah. God wants to do that for. Yeah. Right. There's a thousand other people that God wants to touch, help, and bless through our church. But hear me, it's going to require sacrifice right. on our part. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And if we're not going to make a sacrifice, you know what God will do? Yeah. Right. But if you and I will beat back the buzzards and make those sacrifices, we'll see God do something yeah. Right. Yeah. in our church. Okay. Now hear me. Tonight I'm willing to make the sacrifice. Yeah. Right. I, I've always been with them. I've always wanted God more than I wanted anything else. Amen. Tonight I'd rather have God. Listen to me. We're getting to the end of this thing. Yeah. Yeah. But the time is at hand. Right. I want to say, listen, they should, they should, uh, all our kids in our church, I call them by name, pray for them, that the Lord deals with them, convicts them, draws them, saves them, 
does a work of grace in their heart. This is my prayer. Lord, don't let anybody die and go to hell from a church pew at Landmark Baptist Church. God, how embarrassing it would be to stand before the Savior and they think you had a, a whole bunch of folks in your church died and went to hell. Uh, listen, I don't want that. I say, you know what to do? I try to preach it straight. Try to preach it right. Amen. And I try to pray and beg God uh, to do a work of grace. And hear me, there's no sacrifice to grace. How do you put a price on somebody's eternal soul yeah. that's going to live forever either right. in heaven or in hell? Well, you tell me, what, what kind of price can you put on that? There is no price yeah. too great. There is no sacrifice uh, that is too great for you and I to make to see somebody come to know the Savior, to see God yeah. bless and move yeah. and work and, and get a hold of people's hearts. Hey, we still got to make those sacrifices. Yeah. And when we do, the buzzards are going to start circling. Yeah. Yeah. we got to learn to beat back the buzzards. Amen. Hear me. That, listen. Maybe the Lord's dealt with you about something. Maybe you talked to the Lord and you said, Lord, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'm going to do better. Lord, I'm going to straighten up. And, I, and that thing that I am doing, I'm going to quit. That thing that I ain't doing, I'm going to start. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you were sincere. And you had every intention when you told the Lord that to do it. Then the buzzards right. showed up. Yeah. And now you've kind of let that thing fall by the wayside. Yeah. You've kind of forgot about that promise you made the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you ain't, you ain't beating back the buzzards. They've devoured your sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. And tonight, we need to renew that commitment. Amen. We need to do what we told the Lord we'd do. Sure. Amen. And I don't know what the Lord dealt with you about. I don't know what kind of sacrifice you told him you'd make. But hear me. Then the buzzard showed up and you ain't kept your sacrifice. Right. Yeah. And you're letting the devil rob you of your sacrifice. That's right. Amen. Tonight you gotta be back to buzzards. If you don't, you're gonna be in a mess. Yeah. Tonight there's no doubt God wants to do something. There ain't no doubt in my mind. Yeah. I knew it from the day I walked in here 16 years ago to today. Now if you'd have told me it took 16 years, I might have <laughs> laughed. Mm -hmm. But God's timing's not my time. Right. Right. But listen, God wants to do something here. We're gonna to have to make those sacrifices. Amen. And when the buzzards come, we'll have to beat them buzzards yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. Tonight, I want to give you three things quickly. I know what time it is. I want to give you three things quickly. I want you to notice what happens after Abraham beat back the buzzards. Let me give it to you. Number one, you'll find when Abraham beat back the buzzards, you will find the Lord told him to make that sacrifice. And he spends the majority of the day beating back the buzzards. Right. And listen to me tonight. Uh, you will find that once he does beat back those buzzards, you will find Abraham got some things. Let me give them to you. Number one, you will find that Abraham got the presence of God. Yeah. Yeah. Abraham spends his time protecting his sacrifice. Notice what happens in verse 17. And it came to pass that when the sun went down and it was dark, behold, a smoking furnace and a burning lamp that passed between those pieces. Amen. You study the whole chapter. I don't have time to explain it all. That's the presence of God walking the right. Amen. Side. And hear me. People say, I want the presence of God in my life. And I want the Lord. Uh, to, I, want to, I want the power of God. I want the presence of God. Let me tell you how you do it. You've got to make the sacrifice. Then you've got to beat back the buzzards. Right. Listen, the presence of God is not cheap. Amen. It will cost you something. Yeah. It will. It, you, listen, you're going to have to sacrifice something if you want God's presence in your life. Right. You want to get up. Uh, you want to witness with the touch of God. You want to sing. You want to testify. You want to preach with the touch of God. You want to see the touch of God in your church. You want to see God show up. I'll tell you what it's going to take. It'll take people not only that are willing to sacrifice, but will maintain that sacrifice and beat back the buzzards. Right. Abraham got the presence of God in his life. And the Lord showed up. You know where he showed up? In the midst of the sacrifice. Yeah. You see that sacrifice, they would take those, that, those animals and they would cut them in half and they would take those, those pieces and what they'd do is they would take that animal they cut it in half, and then they would separate it. They'd put half on that side and half on that side. 
And you know where the Lord showed up? Right down the middle of that right. sacrifice. Amen. He passed between the midst of those pieces. Amen. Hear me. You know where God's going to show up where you're going to find the presence of God? In the midst of your sacrifice. Amen. You want God's presence, God's power in your life? Can I be honest? I sit over there all week long just soaking it up. Yeah. Man, the Holy Ghost just a Amen. moving and a blessing. Yeah. I'm sitting over there squalling, just enjoying it. You know what God was doing? He's just walking in the midst of yeah. our sacrifice. Right. But here's yeah. the danger. If you're not careful, you get used to the presence of God. You get used to the power of God. You get used to folks getting in the altar. You get used to folks getting saved. Then you start getting lazy. You start taking it for granted. You start expecting God to show up. And you quit making those sacrifices. You quit beating back the buzzards. And when you do that, guess who stops walking in the midst of your sacrifice? Because there ain't no sacrifice for Him to walk in the midst of. You allow the buzzards to come in and to rob you of your sacrifice. And now there ain't no sacrifice. And when there ain't no sacrifice, there ain't no presence of right. Amen. We've been spoiled black banana rotten with the right. presence of God in this church. Over and over and over. I see God just blow through this place. The world may not know where we're at. I don't have from Ufer County. Don't even know we're back here. But there is a God in heaven that knows exactly where we are. In a little old concrete building. Oh, listen, no fancy building, no big choir. But God knows where we are. You say, why does he keep showing up? Because we are willing to make the sacrifice. Amen. Amen. And beat Amen. back the buzzer. Amen. If you're not careful, you start getting lazy. Oh, yeah. Amen. You just expect yeah. the Lord to show up. Yeah. You expect God to do something. If you ain't careful, then buzzards start circling your sacrifice. They'll devour it. And then there ain't no place for the Lord to walk. Right. Because there ain't no sacrifice. Right. Tonight, getting the power of God in the church is a tough thing. Yeah. Right. Keeping it in the church is even tougher. Yeah. Right. Right. It requires sacrifice. That means we sacrifice this flesh to go pray. It means yeah. we sacrifice this flesh in how we live. Right. Yeah. yeah. That means we don't watch trash on TV. Right. 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 It means we don't listen to the wrong kind of music. Yeah. Right. Right. You say, why? Because we're making a sacrifice. Right. Right. You say it's hard. If it was easy, it wouldn't be a sacrifice. Right. 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 So you know what we do? We sacrifice that stuff and say, I'd rather have Jesus. Amen. Amen. And by continually and constantly making that yeah. sacrifice and then beating back the buzzards from our sacrifice and honoring the Lord, God, in turn, walks right in the midst Amen. of our sacrifice. Right. Amen. First thing you'll find if you'll beat back the buzzards is you'll have the presence of God. Right. Now, he spent the day beating back those buzzards and God ain't nowhere to be found. God shows up, said, make a sacrifice. Abe said, I'll do it. You'll find that the Lord leaves. Now, it's just Abe and the sacrifice. Amen. Yeah. It's hot. Them buzzards just keep coming. And there's no doubt in my mind the way thought, man, I don't know if it's worth it or not. Right. Man, I've done all this and the Lord ain't blessed it. I mean, He told me to do it and I've done it. But now I, can't, I don't know where the Lord is. <clears throat> man, this is tough. Yeah. Man, where's the Lord at? Is the Lord ever going to honor my sacrifice? Yeah. And the sun goes down. Abraham finds that the Lord showed up. Amen. Amen. It may take a while for the Lord to honor your sacrifice. Right. Yeah. But I promise you, He will honor That's it. Right. Amen. Amen. Just like He did with Abraham. And tonight, if we're going to have God and the presence of God and keep God in this place, it's going to require sacrifice. Amen. What we watch, what we listen to, how we live, fasting, praying, spending time in that book, yeah. and honoring the Lord. The first thing that happened is when he made that sacrifice, he got the presence of God. We kind of say this secondly. Not only did he get the presence of God, you'll find he got a promise from God. Look at what happens. Look at verse 18. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given 
this land. From the river of Egypt under the great river, the river Euphrates. Yeah. In the midst of his sacrifice, the Lord shows up in power. But not only does he show up, he makes him a promise. Tonight, you know how we how we 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 lay hold on the promises of God? It's by our sacrifice. Yeah. yeah. And listen to me tonight. You want God to honor that book? You gotta honor the God of that book. Right. Yeah. For God to honor you. And tonight, you want to obtain promises? You want to see God do something in your family? You want to see God answer your prayers? You want to see God honor you? I'll tell you how you do it. Start making those sacrifices. Right. Yeah. And when the devil comes and when the buzzers come, you just beat back the buzzer right. and stay with God and stay with that sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Can I be honest? Fasting ain't fun. Amen. Right. You might as well holler at me. Either you ain't done it, but if you enjoy fasting, <laughs> can I be honest? I didn't like it the first time I done it. I still don't like it now. You yeah. Yeah. My flesh, I, I'm sorry, I ain't that spiritual. I just don't like it. My flesh squirms yeah. every time. Oh, yeah. If I ain't fasting, I can get out of bed, go all day without eating, and never mind. Yeah. The day I fast, by 8.30 that morning, I'm starved to death. Yeah. I feel like I'm about to die. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, brother, listen, I never will forget me and Chad was in Arkansas. I was preaching a revival. And I preached that first night, second year I was out there. Preached that first night. Lord, it was tough. I mean, it's tight. I told my wife, I said, I ain't doing it this way. And so I just pushed the plate back. And Brother Willie, I, I fasted all day. I started that night, fasted all day the next day. They'd come get me for lunch, come get me for breakfast, I'd say, I'm good, thanks. They'd come get me for lunch, no, I'm good, thanks. They'd come back and knock on my door and say, hey, you want dinner? I'd say, no, I'm good. Went to church that night, nothing. I done fasted all day. I said, I ain't doing this. <laughs> yeah. So I just kept fasting. So about the next morning, they come knocked on my door and said, uh, you want some breakfast? And, 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 and it, it never fails. It's always the devil. They had grits, <laughs> bacon, <laughs> eggs, sausage, hash browns, biscuits and gravy. Amen. I mean, they had a spread laid out. Yeah. They said, you want some breakfast? I said, no, I'm good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they come back and said, you want some lunch? I said, no, I'm all right. They said, how about some dinner? No, no, I'm good. Got in the pulpit that night. Started on Monday, preached on sin. So, went back to church Tuesday night, preached on sin. Went back to church Wednesday night, done fasted two days straight, preached on sin. The Lord said, you can go ahead and eat. And I started eating. Preached on Friday, Thursday, preached on sin, preached on Friday, preached on sin, packed up Friday night, jumped in the truck and headed to the house. Drove nine hours straight to get home. Didn't see nothing. I couldn't hardly get a grunt out of that crowd. There's 200 sitting there. Right. I couldn't get a grunt out of that crowd. Both Curtis have been out there. Yeah. I preached. God, I plowed. I struggled. I fasted. I prayed. Two solid days, never eat a bite. Man, I, can I be honest? I, maybe you're more spiritual than I am, but I left a little bit discouraged. Right. Oh, yeah. I come home, got ready, went to church on Sunday. Sunday afternoon, I got in the car. My phone rang. It's that preacher. I don't know, about 2 o'clock, I guess, time I got home. Yeah. He called me. He said, you ain't going to believe what happened. I said, really? What happened? He said, it blowed out this morning. We had 11 people yep. said. Oh, Amen. 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 Now, my point is this. What if you give up on that sacrifice? That's right. right. Amen. Heaven and hell may stand in the balance yeah. for somebody. Right. Amen. Yeah. Tonight, God wants us to make that sacrifice. Amen. Yeah. And not make it for a day or two. Right. And then right. let the buzzards devour. Right. But to maintain that sacrifice. Right. So number one, you'll find you got the presence of God. Number two, you'll find you got the promise of God. But number three, you'll find you had the peace of God. Notice what happens. Look at verse number 12. And when the sun was going down, a deep 
sleep fell upon Abram. Abram said, I believe God. I trusted the Lord. I've done what He told me to do. Now I can go home and go to bed. Amen. Yeah. And hear me, if you'll just make that sacrifice, and if you'll beat back the buzzards, you can have the peace of God resting in your heart. Right. If we show up here Sunday morning and, 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 and it's a fight, it's a struggle, you can say, Lord, I've done everything I know how to do. Right. Amen. And tonight, you can go home, lay your head on your pillow, saying, God, I've made the sacrifices I told you I've made. The things you dealt with my heart about, the things you told me to give up, I've give up. The things you told me to start doing, I've started doing. Lord, I've beat back the buzzards. It provides peace down in your heart. No, you've done everything you're supposed to do. And hear me, you'll be able to sleep at night. Amen. You ever have a Lord tell you to do something? And then on the, that internal struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Part of you says, yeah, I need to do that. Another part says, no, I don't. Yeah. And you just go back and forth, back and forth. Amen. Watch miserable. Yeah. The sweetest time when the Lord tells me to do something, when I say, yes, Lord, I'll do it. Amen. And I just surrender. Can I be honest? I mentioned this earlier. I, I, and please think me not critical because I ain't. I really didn't want to go, son. Right. Can I be honest? I don't want to go. I don't. I want to be here. This is where God put me. Amen. This is my spot. This is my number one concern. Amen. This is my heart. Amen. Ain't no doubt in my mind, this place comes first above ever. Right. That preacher called me and said, I want you to come. I said, well, it'll be after revival. I thought he meant January. I thought I, thought I was clear, but apparently I wasn't. <laughs> he said, good, I want you to come on the 19th. I said, I, I, I thought about a day or two and him hauled around. I said, uh, I, I said, I told my wife, I said, I ain't going to do it. I said, I want to be at my church on Sunday after revival. I, I don't want to go. I, want, I said, I'll, I'll reschedule him. And we prayed. And I'll be honest, I struggled a little bit, but I called him and said, hey, uh, I ain't going to make it. I said, I need to be home. And he said, okay, preacher. I hung up the phone with him, come to church. It's dead as 4 o'clock. I got home, talked to the Lord a little bit, got up Thursday morning and started praying. I said, Lord, what happened last night? It seemed like you wasn't within a million miles of that place. And the Holy Ghost spoke to my heart and said, you canceled that meeting. I said, well, Lord, you know what? Lord said, I want you to go. Amen. Right. You said, did you call and cancel them? Yeah. Uh, did you call and reschedule them? Yeah, I did on Saturday. Took me two or three days to really get settled. I knew it was a war. Yeah. But a struggle. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, I want to be home. And the Holy Ghost kept nudging me, saying, I want you to go. I want you to go. I want you to go. Yeah. Finally, I'm, man, I'm miserable. Yeah. Finally, on Saturday, I said, all right, Lord, I'll do it. Called, I texted him. It's about 1 o'clock in the morning, Saturday morning. I texted him. I said, you up? He said, yeah, I'm up. I said, hey, man, the Lord's run me out. I'll be there on the 19th. He said, good. He said, "My, I told my treasurer you weren't coming. That's the only person I told. She said, uh, do I need to cancel the room? He said, I told her, no, I'll just wait. <laughs> Amen. You know when I finally got peace? When I find myself. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. I'll do it. I don't understand it. I may not even necessarily agree with it. Right. I may not like it. But that's what you told me to do. And there ain't no doubt in my mind that's what I'm supposed to do. Amen. Right. That struggle, that conflict, that's yeah. miserable. Oh, yeah. You know what I said? All right, well, yeah. I'll do it. And once I did it, the sweet peace of God flooded my soul. Amen. We went to meet and had a time. The Lord blessed. Amen. But hear me, you're going to have to make that sacrifice. Yeah. And do what God tells you to do. Amen. Amen. And you, when you make that sacrifice, you beat back the buzzards. Amen. God fill your, your heart Amen. with peace. Right. Yes, sir. Tonight, what kind of sacrifice the Lord dealt with you about? Yeah. 
What's God told you to give up? What's God told you to start doing? Yeah. Tonight you're struggling with that thing. Hear me, you'll never have peace till you lay the sacrifice out, take your hands off of it, and then just right, get back to buzzing. Yeah. God will give you His peace. God will give you His presence. <clears throat> and God will fulfill His promise. Amen. Amen. Tonight, you got some buzzards you need to beat back. Won't you come? Amen. Won't you come? Do business with the Lord tonight. Let the Lord have His way in your heart. There's been a few sacrifices through the years that were difficult to make. I ain't going to lie. Maybe it's easy for you. But I struggle sometimes. Amen. And can I be honest? Sometimes them sacrifices hurt a little bit. But there ain't been a one of them. Not a one. That I, there's never been a sacrifice I've ever made for the Lord. What God didn't bless yeah. and God didn't use. Right. And somewhere down the road. God Amen. Made. Tonight, God dealing with you about sacrifice. Or maybe in the past, you, you, you said, I'm going to make you a sacrifice. And you've kind of let it fall by the wayside. You've not fulfilled your sacrifice. You've let the buzzards come and devour it up. If that's you tonight, won't you come? Yeah. Won't you do business with the Lord? Won't you, won't you make that sacrifice? And beat back those buzzards. Let the Lord have his way. God will bless you with his presence. He'll fulfill his promises and he'll give you sweet peace. Amen. As we say, Father, I've preached what you give me. Lord, I don't know nobody's heart, but I know, Lord, me. So, Lord, I pray you'd speak to the hearts of your people tonight. Lord, I pray you'd help us to make that sacrifice. Dear God, help us to beat back the buzzards that are trying to devour our sacrifice. Lord, if we'll beat back the buzzards, you promised us your presence. Lord, you will fulfill your promises. Lord, you'll give us sweet peace. Lord, all those promises we backed up on, all those sacrifices we backed up on, God, help us to renew them. Help us to fulfill our commitments. Help us to beat back the buzzards when the devils come. Try to convince us and talk us out of our sacrifice. May we beat back the buzzards. Help your people tonight in Jesus' name.
So now if you're visiting with us, thank you so much for coming. But church, if we want to go to the next level, it's going to cost us. It's just the way it is. If it was cheap, every church would be a great church. But it ain't cheap. And the fact that God wants to do something here is a rare thing. And I don't want him to say, well, I tried there, I'll go over here. No. It's going to cost us something. Yeah. And it must be a price we're willing to pray, to pay. Tonight, I love you. Pray for us. We'll be praying for here Sunday. And uh, we're going to be dismissed in the word of prayer. Brother Aaron, just now. Yeah, Father, I thank you for the message we heard tonight here, Father. Lord, I pray that you uh, uh, help us to, uh, to guard our hearts or guard our, guard our desires for you, dear Father God. Lord, I pray that you to help us to uh, maintain those sacrifices, dear Father God. The Lord, it's, uh, it's easy to, to get back into the day-to-day -day routine of what, of what we used to do after we made a promise to the Lord, dear Father God. Lord, I pray Lord, that you help us to... Uh, to stay true to our word, dear Father God, stay true to you. Lord, I pray that you keep us uh, safe as we travel, that you bring us back to the next point out of the world. We love you. Thank you for it all. Give us a prayer. Amen.